collapsed, or what I uh, think more accurately should be described as the Labour revolt um, that swept Britain in the years leading up to the First World War, um, I think was one of the most sustained, dramatic, and uh, certainly violent explosions of industrial militancy and social confrontation that this country's ever seen. After a, a, a relative strike quiescence lasting for about 20 years, um, there was a sudden and unanticipated eruption that really dwarfed the new unionist strike wave uh, that occurred, uh, you know, 20 years uh, earlier. And of course, this was a strike wave which was to involve a number of very large uh, national strikes in strategically important areas of the economy, seamen, dockers, transport workers, railmen, engineering workers, and so on. It embraced many, many different industries. And it involved not only workers who were members of trade unions, but many workers who were not. And therefore, the battle over pay, over declining, uh, uh, you know, purchasing pay, over the conditions of work, also often gravitated around the issue of the rights of union recognition of collective organisation and so on. And significantly, workers during this period, I think, were to enjoy considerable success. It was quite a dramatic shift in the balance of power away from employers towards workers, there was an absolutely enormous increase in the level of trade union membership, the beginnings of uh, the restructuring of trade union organisation in Britain, and also a political radicalisation in which the radical left, I think, was to play a significant role.